The National Wrestling Alliance ENW is an American professional wrestling promotion and former governing body operating via its parent company Lightning One, Inc. Founded in 1948, the NW began as a governing body for a group of independent professional wrestling promotions, the heads of which made up the board of directors. The group operated a territory system which sanctioned various championships, recognized one world champion, participated in talent exchanges, and collectively protected the territorial integrity of member promotions. Prior to the 1960s it acted as the sole governing body for most of professional wrestling. It remained the largest and most influential body in wrestling until the mid-1980s by which time most of the original member promotions went out of business as a result of the World Wrestling Federation's the WWF, now WWE National Expansion. In September 1993, the largest remaining member promotion, World Championship Wrestling the WCW, left the NW for the second and final time. The NWA would continue as a loose coalition of independent promotions, with NWA total non-stop action given exclusivity over its World Heavyweight and Tag Team Championships from June 2002 until May 2007. In August 2012, the NWA discontinued its memberships and started licensing its brand to wrestling promotions. By 2019, the NWA would transition to become a singular promotion. In 1948, Paul Pinky, George, a promoter from the Midwest, founded the National Wrestling Alliance with the backing of five other promoters. Al Haft, Tony Stecker, Harry Light, Orville Brown, and Sam Mucknick. The concept of the NWO was to consolidate the championships of these regional companies into one true world championship of professional wrestling, whose holder would be recognized worldwide. This newly formed NWA board of directors decided on Brown to be the first ever NWA World Heavyweight Champion. In 1950, Sam Mucknick, one of the original promoters of the NWA and Fesha's Booker, was named the new NWA president, a position to which he was unanimously re-elected and held until 1960, making him one of the longest tenured presidents in the organization's history. Following the advent of television, professional wrestling matches began to be aired nationally during this time, reaching a larger audience than ever before. Rising demand and national expansion made wrestling a much more and lucrative form of entertainment than in decades previous. This would be known as the golden age for the wrestling industry. From 1948 until 1955, each of the three major television networks broadcast wrestling shows, the largest supporter being the Dumont Television Network. In 1956, allegations were made that the NW was an illegal monopoly blocking competition. An investigation led by the U.S. Department of Justice resulted in the NWA Consent Decree of 1956. Several promoters would leave the organization during this time, with some managing to find niches in the United States. In 1957, Montreal promoter Eddie Quinn walked out of the August NW meeting in St. Louis, having fallen out with Mutnick over a number of issues. At the time Quinn walked out, a wrestler of his name Vir Carpentier was involved in an angle where he and Luthesh were both being presented around the NW as world champion after Carpentier had a disputed win over Thesh on June 14, 1957. As the 1950s came to end close, professional wrestling was losing television ratings, and soon TV stations dropped most wrestling shows from their lineups. The remaining televised wrestling promoters had small, local syndicated shows, which aired as late-night filler programming. Promoters started using localized television by purchasing airtime from rival territories, at the consequence of putting some of them out of business. On January 24, 1963, at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, Luthesh defeated Buddy Rogers in a one-fall match and was declared NWA World Heavyweight Champion for the third and final time. However, after the event, Vincent J. McMahon and Toots Mont from the Capital Wrestling Corporation promotion in the Northeast Territory refused to recognize the title change since Thesh as the NWA World Heavyweight Champion was not a strong draw in their territory. They then withdrew CWC from the NWA, as a result, McMahon and Mont formed the Worldwide Wrestling Federation later to be known as WWE with Rogers as its first world champion in April 1963. 
Although both Ganey and McMahon promoted their own world champions, their promotions continued to have representatives on the NWA board of directors and regularly exchanged talent with NWA promotions during this time. Wrestling's popularity continued to decline in the 1970s. The WWWF quietly rejoined the NWA in 1971 after their biggest draw, Bruno Sammartino, left the promotion. While still an NWA member in 1979, they changed their name from Worldwide Wrestling Federation the WWWF to World Wrestling Federation the WWF at some point during the decade, Mudnick reportedly declared Atlanta, Georgia is the leading wrestling city for its drawing capacity and near capacity crowds at the City Auditorium or the Omni every Friday while the American Wrestling Association the AW and Worldwide Wrestling Federation slash World Wrestling Federation both faltered during the 1970s. The NW once again took over as the top promotion and gained huge dominance with their program, Georgia Championship Wrestling, which would become the first nationally broadcast wrestling program on cable television through then Superstation TV. UBS in 1979. They brought in Gordon Soli, dubbed the Walter Cronkite of professional wrestling from former NWA President Eddie Graham's championship wrestling from Florida Territory to be lead commentator and host. Videotape trading and cable television paved the way for the decline of the NWA's inter-regional business model, as viewers could now see plot holes and inconsistencies between each territory's storylines. The presence of stars like Ric Flair on TV every week made their special appearances in each region less of a draw. The WWF left the NWF for good in 1983, as Vincent K. McMahon, who got the WWF from his father in 1982, worked to get WWF programming on syndicated television all across the United States. That same year, Jim Crockett Promotions and the NW created its primary supercard, Starcade, the first to be broadcast via closed-circuit networks and was regarded as their flagship event. On Saturday, July 14, 1984, in what would become known as Black Saturday, McMahon bought NW member Georgia Championship Wrestling the GCW and merged it into the WWF. The WWF would take over GCW's TV slot on TBS, which had been home to GCW's World Championship Wrestling program for 12 years. This move proved disastrous as ratings would plummet, and the WWF would end up losing money on the deal. Then NWA President Jim Crockett, Jr., the owner of Jim Crockett Promotions JCP would buy the World Championship Wrestling Program from McMahon for $1 million and returned NWA programming to TBS by 1985. Jim Crockett Promotions JCP would become the flagship of the NWA by acquiring more time slots on TBS and merging with other NWA territories in attempt to compete with the WWF. With the success of WrestleMania 3 in 1987, the WWF would schedule another pay-per-view, Survivor Series, on Thanksgiving night to compete directly with NWA Starcade event, and demanded exclusivity from cable providers on carriage of the event. As a result, Starcade was moved to December the following year, with the show now held around Christmas Day beginning in 1988. The WWF then scheduled their first Royal Rumble event in January 88 to counter program against the NWA's bunkhouse stampede. The NW responded by creating Clash of the Champions on TBS to counter program WrestleMania 4. By 1988, Jim Crockett Promotions was facing bankruptcy. On October 11th, under the direction of owner Ted Turner, TBS got the assets of JCP and renamed it World Championship Wrestling WCW after the TV show of the same name. Originally incorporated by TBS as the Universal Wrestling Corporation, Turner promised fans that WCW would retain the athlete-oriented style of the NWA. The sale was completed on November 2, 1988, with a television taping of NWA World Championship Wrestling that very same day in WCW's hometown of Atlanta. By September 1993, WCW would withdraw completely from the NWA. On August 27, 1994, NWA Eastern Championship Wrestling known as ECW held a world title tournament for the vacant NWA World Heavyweight Championship. 
Unbeknownst to anyone, the event was staged for ECW's public withdrawal from the NWA, with tournament winner Shane Douglas throwing down the NWA title belt and instead picking up the ECW Heavyweight Championship belt, proclaiming himself to be the ECW World Heavyweight Champion. ECW founder Todd Gordon would subsequently announce ECW secession from the NWA, recognizing the promotion as Extreme Championship Wrestling. In 1998, the World Wrestling Federation reached an agreement to use the likeness of the NWA titles, branding, and its history, to create a storyline. It would be a later claim that WWE still owned the rights. Despite the NWA receiving international television publicity during the angle, it was considered a failure due to low viewer interests. In June 2002, Jeff and Jerry Jarrett launched a new promotion called NWA. Total Non-Stop Action, now known as Impact Wrestling. NWA TNA was given creative control over the NWA World Heavyweight and World Tag Team Championships through an agreement with the NWA. This would last until March 2007, when the NWA terminated its agreement with TNA. TNA would lose control over the NWA World Heavyweight and World Tag Team Championships by the morning of the 2007 Sacrifice Pay-Per-View event on May 13. In August 2012, International Wrestling Corp, LLC, a holding company run by Houston-based attorney and wrestling promoter Arbus Tharp, sued Trabic, Ocon, the NWA, and its then parent company, Trabic's Pro Wrestling Organization LLC, claiming insurance fraud regarding the NWA's liability insurance policy. A settlement was negotiated that transferred the rights to the NWA name and trademarks from Trabic's company to Tharp's. The new organization moved from a membership model to a licensing model, which caused many promotions to immediately cut ties with the NWA. On September 9, 2012, Championship Wrestling from Hollywood CWFH announced it had left the NWA. CWFH was the unofficial home promotion of both the then current NWA champion Adam Pearce and the most recent previous champion Colt Cabana, both of whom publicly left the NWA, with Pearce vacating the NWA world title while exiting. Other major NWA territories like NWA Pro and NWA Pro West, NWA Georgia, NWA Pro East, NWA Southwest and NWA Midwest folded. In 2013, the NWA established a relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling, where Bruce Tharp became an on-screen character portraying a villainous manager of wrestlers representing the NWA. Over the next two years, the NWA World Heavyweight, World Tag Team and World Junior Heavyweight Championships all changed hands at NJPW events. In September 2016, NWA signed a deal with the new Japanese Diamond Stars Wrestling the DSW promotion to promote shows in not only Japan, but also other parts of Asia. As part of the deal, DSW Chairman Hideo Shimada was appointed the NWA Vice President of the Asian Pacific Region while Jimmy Suzuki was appointed Senior NWA Consultant. On May 1, 2017, it was reported that Billy Corgan, lead singer of the Smashing Pumpkins, had agreed to purchase the NWA, including its name, rights, trademarks and championship belts. The report was confirmed by Tharp that same day. Over the following weeks, the NWA trademarks were moved from Tharp's International Wrestling Corp. over to Corgan's Lightning One, Inc. production company. According to multiple sources, as part of his acquisition of the NWA, Corgan would also purchase Tharp's stake in the NWA's on-demand, VOD service and licensing of the Paul Bosch Wrestling Library. Corgan's ownership of the NW took effect on October 1, 2017. All licenses granted by Tharp to use the NW branding expired the previous day, putting Corgan in complete control of both the brand and its championships. Corgan forms the organization's new leadership alongside Dave Logan. On September 23, 2017, Nick Aldis made his debut for championship wrestling from Hollywood and challenged Tim Storm for the NWA World Heavyweight Championship. The match took place on November 12 and saw Storm retain the title. This was the first title match under the new NWA regime headed by Billy Corgan. On December 9, Aldis defeated Storm in a rematch at Cage of Death 19 to become the new NWA World Heavyweight Champion, making him the second British-born champion after Gary Steele. 
In 2018, the NWA briefly allied with Impact Wrestling the former NWA. Total non-stop action to hold an empty arena match at the Impact Zone at Universal Orlando in Orlando, Florida. It was contested by Tim Storm and Joseph S. and served as a qualifier to challenge an NWA World Heavyweight Champion Nick Aldis. The match was recorded on January 14, 2018 and uploaded to YouTube the next day. Starting in 2018, NW allied with Ring of Honor ROH NW wrestlers such as Aldis, James Storm, and Eli Drake appeared at several ROH events, with ROH contracted talent even winning NW titles. On September 1, 2018, the NWA World Heavyweight Championship was featured at All In, with Cody defeating Aldis for the title. After All In, the NW would return to hosting its own events. The NW 70th anniversary show, which took place on October 21, 2018, was the first to be produced directly under a lightning one, and was co-produced with Global Force Entertainment. The event was streamed live on Fight TV. The main event saw Aldis defeat Cody to recapture the NWA World Heavyweight Championship and Willie Mack winning a tournament for the vacant NWA National Championship. The fourth Crockett Cup, an eight-team, single elimination tournament that was revived to crown new NWA World Tag Team Champions, took place on April 27, 2019 as another collaboration between the NW and ROH. This would be the last event to be co-promoted with ROH. On July 24, 2019, the NW In January 2020, Marty Skrull, and other Ring of Honor talent, began to appear at NW events once again as part of an interpromotional angle. In addition to Ray signing with ROH, Skrull would join the company's booking team, enabling him to appear for both the NW and ROH. However, in the fallout of the speaking out movement, Skrull was accused of taking advantage of a 16-year-old girl who was inebriated. After an investigation, Skrull would remove from his position as booker, and by the following January in 2021, would be no longer under contract. Nick Aldis was scheduled to face PCO at Supercard of Honor 14 on April 4, 2020 before the event was cancelled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. On June 18, 2020, Dave Logan resigned as vice president of the NW after allegations of sexual assault were made public. The promotion would go into hiatus as a result of this and the pandemic. During this time, several wrestlers would also leave the NWA, including former tag team champions James Storm and Eli Drake, Marty Bell, former women's champion Allison Kay, former tag team champion Royce Isaacs, and former television champion Zicky Dice. NWA World Women's Champion Thunder Rosa would make appearances for All Elite Wrestling AEW under contract with the NWA. On September 5, 2020, Rosa unsuccessfully challenged AEW Women's World Championship Hikaru Shida at All Out. On October 27, 2020, Sarah Deeb defeated Rosa during the United Wrestling Network's primetime live event to become the new NWA World Women's Champion. On March 2, 2021, the NW announced their return to promoting events, with the NWA back for the Attack pay-per-view and new Power episodes as part of a new distribution agreement with Fight TV. As part of this agreement, the NW would remove content from their YouTube channel. On January 5, 2022, the NW announced the launch of the NWA All Access subscription package on Fight TV, including past and upcoming pay-per-view events, new episodes of Power on Tuesdays, and the newly announced NWA US a weekly series. In addition, it was announced that Power would return to YouTube, airing on Fridays after the fight premiere, and that NWA US would air on Saturdays on the platform before moving to Sundays on fight. Finally, it was announced that the NWA would expand their PPV schedule to six events per year, as part of a new deal with Fight TV.